Listen. Listen. That's right. I'm just hearing the Lord say that right now. That he wants to speak into each life here, in each individual, something that he has for you. So let's stop right now and just listen for him. where you are, just ask the Lord, what would you say to me, my God? Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Thank you that we can stop. That we can just rest. And that we are allowed the privilege, Lord, that as we seek you, you will speak to us. Let us search after you with all of our hearts. Well, I was going to conclude with this, but now I'm supposed to start with it. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. This is my continual invitation to you, proclaimed in holy whispers. When your heart and mind are quiet, you can hear me inviting you to draw near. Coming close to me requires no great effort on your part. It is more like ceasing to resist the magnetic pull of my love. Open yourself to my loving presence so that I may fill you with my fullness. I want you to experience how wide and long and high and deep is my love for you so that you can know my love that surpasses knowledge. This vast ocean of love cannot be measured or explained, but it can be experienced. Lord, we come to you. Let us hear the holy whisper in the quiet and in the stillness of our soul.
well, I had this whole sermon planned, all these things to say, and I'm just hearing the Lord and saying, just grab a hold of the pieces and pull them out and let me give the presentation of them. So Lord, I invite you now to do that. Help me see what you want me to proclaim, Lord, so it's your proclamation, not mine. Well, I plan to say, uh, Ryan, do your cardio. Because sometimes you don't want to do cardio, do you? No. Anybody here like cardio? Cindy gave the best illustration of what many of us feel like when we say do cardio. I'll do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow, Lord. I'll do it tomorrow, Lord. Yep. Do your cardio. All right. Now, I was going to say something entirely different, but this is just what I hear the Lord saying right now. How many of you have been practicing the art of breathing before the presence of the Lord? That you just stop and breathe. Because God is not only the one who speaks out, as the breath of life, but he is the one who invites in to experience also in your breathing. Go ahead, breathe, right? Just stop and breathe. To breathe him in and to let those things out that are not of him. As we're breathing and we just say okay Lord I just want to breathe you in into the fullness and the joy of that invitation there are some things that come against that would want to pull us away from having the breath of life enter in that comes only from the presence of God. In Acts chapter 24, verse 25, there was a point in which Paul was doing all of his missioning that he had an opportunity to present the gospel to a man named Felix. And here's what happened in that moment when Paul was sharing some things. It said, but as Paul was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became frightened and said, go away for the present. And when I find time, I will summon you. We just repainted the fellowship hall recently. And Cindy said to me this last Wednesday, where's the clock? Right? That's a good question. Important question. Especially when you know Pastor Josh. Because <laughs> Pastor Josh can go over time sometimes. And I've heard the Lord saying, it's time to get a clock that says, my time is his time. There is an invitation to hear the things of God, to know the things of God, to know them richly and deeply. 
And there are times that even we can be like Felix. That as we seek the Lord and even search his word, that we can say, whoa, what is this righteousness that's being spoken of? What is this self-control? What is this judgment and end and things to come that could make a person feel a little uncomfortable? And there are times that God wants to invite something very rich and very deep into our lives. And there are some times that when the Lord wants to do the best work on us, and I'm telling you, right now is one of those moments. He wants to do the best work on us that we say, go away for the present. And when I find time, I will summon you. I don't get loud too much too often, but I think it's very fair in this moment to say, Lord, rebuke us for any such thought, for any contention whatsoever in which says, I don't think I want to hear that. I'm going to stop short what you want to say to me, Lord, because it's getting a little too uncomfortable. Please stop, Lord. Don't you know I have to be at coffee in five minutes with my friend? And Jesus would say, who's your friend? Who's your friend? Not to just cast people off to the side, but never, never cast Jesus off to the side. Because if you do, you yourself will become like the seed that Jesus speaks of in Mark chapter 4, where the sower, Jesus, dropped seed onto ground. And some seed fell by the wayside, by the side of the road, some fell on rocky ground, some fell among thorns, some fell among good soil. Beside the road, we're told that the enemy came and snatched up much of that seed. A person heard the word of the Lord, yet they allowed the enemy to come in and say, you don't even want that, so let me have it. Some fell among rocky ground. We're told in the word that the seed that fell among the rocky ground in Mark 4, that it sprang up quickly because they said, I hear the message and I hear the joy and I hear the good things, the good things of all that this message is. But can I say to you today that while we want the good things, we're not willing to go through the hard things in order to get the really good things. The seed by the rocky ground. I'll spring up for a moment because it adds value to my life. But don't give me too much Jesus. Because once you've given me too much of him, I have to start losing some of myself. And I don't want to do that. Some seed fell among thorns. We're told in the word that while these seeds grew up, that the thorns began to choke the plant that was being grown in the Lord. I'm just gonna, can I be honest with you, church? Can I be, can I be honest? Of the ones that I've read about, this is the one that I struggle with in terms of knowing that as I, the, the seed that's been cast to the side, I'm, a visual representation of that. We are visual representation of that. 
And that sometimes the seed can, while it grows, get tangled up in things that it shouldn't be entangled with, where the, the thoughts of, well, don't you want money? Don't you want people to know you a little bit better because you got a message to proclaim that they need to hear? No, no, no. I must become less. I must decrease. He must increase. I must live into the crucified life and not be choked by the thorns and the catchy desires of this life. And sometimes we can get caught up in those things and the Lord says, we got to do some work to pull some things out. Because the kingdom has been built into you, but there is an enemy and there are some thorns that are trying to strip it out of your life. We want to be those of whom are planted among the good soil. And what happened with those who were planted among the good soil? The seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased discipleship, they yielded a crop and produced 30, 60, and 100 fold. Look around you, church. We are ripe to increase 100 fold. But we must allow ourselves to be planted richly and deeply into that good soil to hear the word of the Lord and to respond to it. I heard an amen. Who said it? Tony said it? I heard a woman's amen. Tony said it. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Amen means let it be done. I'm going to say it again, church. We are rich and ready for the increase. That's right. It's worth laughing about. That's right. A Satan does not like what's happening right now. This is good. Okay. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This was the title of the sermon today. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. We have learned much, church, in this series. Lessons from our Lord, from the examples of of Jesus the picture is so clear and sometimes pictures aren't so clear because the picture must be formed through words are you hearing Jesus's words spoken to you and over you to form the picture of what he wants your life to look like to plant you in the rich and deep and good soil, which automatically happens when you just hear him, you hear his good word, and you respond to it. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. It is an invitation to all to every one. Even those in here today who say, I don't hear God's voice. You will find me and you will hear me, I believe is a fair declaration to declare when you seek me with all of your hearts. Lord, I want to hear you. You know what one of the first things he's probably going to speak to you? If you ask that, 
What are you willing to lose for it? What are you willing to invest to let go of in order to hear me? And we got to hear this too. Because for those of us who say, I can't hear God, oh no, you most certainly can. But you got to look where he's already supplied his voice, his message. He will speak. He has already spoken. You can put your trust in. And you can put your trust in him. I'm hearing the Lord say, you're done, Josh. You said everything that I wanted said. So Lord, we receive your word. We receive what you've had to say to us today. Thank you for this word. Thank you that we war with principalities and powers, Lord, which means we ourselves are powerless without you, Lord, coming in to win the battle. And it says in your word that the battle is the Lord's. So we need to only do one thing, Lord. Trust and obey. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.